grateful, grateful, grateful. We are grateful this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Grateful, 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 grateful,
Help me lift up my Jesus. Help me lift him up. He said, if I be lifted up, talking about him, he'll draw. He said, tell him, tell him about me. Tell him about me. But in doing that, you must make his name glorious. So when you come, when we come in here, when we enter, we need to make his name glorious. Praise. Praise him with the dead. Praise him with the dead. Praise him with the dead. Come on, y'all. Do like that. Come on. That's me. Now, come on. Ah. Now, here we go. Here we go. Come on. The song says, when you come into his presence, when you come into his presence, lifting up the name of Jesus,
praise Jesus. Hallelujah, saints. Hallelujah. Well, good, glorious God morning to you all. Joining us here in the sanctuary and those joining us via Facebook and via, what's the other one? YouTube. Praise God. Thank you for remembering. Yes, God, that all you who are joining us via way of the internet, we thank you for spending time with us this morning. We come to say welcome to the Burning Bush Baptist Church in Victorville, California. Give God some praise. Give God some glory for waking you up this morning, for putting breath in your body. Thank God this morning that you have life. And you have salvation. Yes, we thank you this day. On behalf of our bishop, Dr. David Denson Jr., hey, give him some praise for serving God and surrendering to God and obeying God and not letting himself be distracted. Praise God. And on behalf of our first lady, we wish you a good morning and a great day from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ and our Creator God and the Holy Spirit that speaks to us. Well, it's Sunday, March 27th, and it is time to have our 91st song. If you can stand, please stand with us here in the sanctuary, and those at home, please stand if you're able. And we're going to go to the 91st Psalms 2. I'm going there too. We're going to the secret place of the Most High. And as you read the scripture, fill it in your heart. Let it touch your soul. Ready? Read. He that dwelleth in a secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. He shall cover me with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that fly by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thy eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under feet, because he hath set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he have known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Glory to God. Praise God. Hallelujah, saints. Thank God for his salvation. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this day. God, we thank you for your gifts, God. We thank you, God, for your love. Father, we thank you for forgiving us, God, of our sins. Thank you, God, for cleansing us with the blood of Jesus. Thank you, God, for wiping our slate clean, God, and giving us a new day, God, and giving us a new opportunity, and giving us a new journey, God. 
Father, we thank you today, God, that your word reigns in our heart, God. God, and that we are doers of your word and not just hearers, God. Father, we thank you this day, God, that in the name of Jesus, God, that every knee must bow, God, and everything on the earth must submit to the name of Jesus, God. So, Father, this day, we ask, God, that the people, God, that are seeking you, God, the people that are looking for you, God, that this be a glorious day, God, where you manifest their prayers in their lives, God. God, let this be a day, God, that the person who is looking for you, God, somebody is looking for your word to change their life, God. Somebody is looking for your word to work in their lives, God. Father, we ask this day, God, that you give them that daily prayer, God, that thing that sustains them, God. Father, we ask that you do a new work in us, God, that we work out our salvation, God, with fear and trembling, God, that there be no lack, God, in our house, God, because, God, somebody is looking for you to do your word, God, in their lives, God. Let this glorious day, God, be a day of manifestation of your word, God. That somebody just doesn't hear your word, God, but they receive your word and do it, God. Somebody's looking for you today, God. The people in Ukraine are looking for you today, God. The people all over the world are looking for you, God. So, God, we ask today, in the name of Jesus, that the manifestation of somebody's prayer, somebody, God, who's been down on their knees, for months, for years, God, asking for your request, God. God, we pray that that petition, God, be answered today, God, so that it'll be glorious day in their lives, God. Do it, God, because you said you will. This is the confidence that we have in you, that we ask anything according to your will, God. You hear us, God. And if we know that you hear us, we know that we have the petition that we ask for. God, somebody's looking for you. Make it a glorious day by manifesting your word today. We pray in the name of Jesus. And we believe your word. And as believers, we all say, amen. Amen. Thank God for his manifestation. Thank God. Praise God this morning. Amen. Prayer is awesome. What a great feeling to be able to pray to a God that created you and has sustained you and has given you life. Feel the prayers of the righteous. Amen. Amen. So we're going to have our announcements this morning. Our announcements for Sunday, March 27th, in the year 2022. Please open your ears and hear. This week, this week, it's our prayer and fast week. Hey, give God some glory. Give God some glory. This week, we will be praying Monday, Tuesday, Thursday and Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday and Friday at 6 a.m. and 7 p.m. And then on Wednesday, it'll be 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. Please join us with prayer right there on the Zoom link. Family Day at the Burning Bush Baptist Church will be Saturday, April the 16th. And it will be from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. There will be free food. Free food. Y'all know y'all love some free food. Local vendors, kid-friendly games and activities. We're going to have free COVID vaccines for kids and adults. We'll have free gift cards. So that's a reason to come out right there. For those who are getting COVID testing, there'll be music, prizes, and much more. So mark it on your calendar, Saturday, April 16th, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Right here at the Burning Bush Church. We have COVID testing still going on right here at the Bush. 
That is every Tuesday and Wednesday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. The state of California is rewarding you for keeping yourself and community and your loved ones safe by getting COVID tested. If you get COVID tested during that time, you can receive a free gift card each time you get a COVID test. I read that right. Each time you get a COVID test. Praise God for COVID testing. Hey, this is our first fruit season. Yes. Praise God. First fruit, fruit season. It's a season, not just a day. We are in our first fruit season. We want to honor God with our wealth, and we want to honor God with the first fruits of all our produce, because the word says, then your barns will be filled with plenty, and your presses will burst with new wine. So please participate and sow a seed, because a seed will meet your need during this first fruit season. Clap your hands right now. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. It's Bishop's birthday next month. Yeah. Our bishop is turning 63 years old on April, May, no, April. April the 8th. Thank you. Remember, <laughs> it's going to be Bishop's 63rd birthday on April the 8th, and we will celebrate together April 10th here at our 10 a.m. service to honor our bishop. Love gifts are welcome. And you know, as is customary here, we give bishop a dollar for each day. Nah, each day? You want it for each day, don't you? See? <laughs> I'm speaking into your life, bishop. <laughs> we give a dollar for each year that bishop has been here on this earth. And as I said there, he will be 63 on April the 8th, so so accordingly. Amen. Praise God. Easter celebration. Yay! Next month, April 17th, is Easter. Resurrection Day all over the world where we thank God for our resurrected Savior. That day, April the 17th, we'll, we will have two services. That will be at 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. And as you see there on your screen and on the screen here in the sanctuary, your screen on the TV, there's a Good Friday service that's April 15th. Good Friday. 7.30 p.m. right here at the Brennan Bush Church. And then there's the family day that I just mentioned. That's going to be April 16th. And that's 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And then Sunday, Easter Resurrection Day, we will have services twice. 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. Thank you for serving God. Praise God. Glory to God. Hey, it is offering time. Give God some praise with your worship. Worship God in your giving. So as we prepare for our offering, as the deacons prepare, and as you prepare at home, you see we have multiple ways to give there push given. You can push pay. You can do the Zelle. You can do it through the website. You can actually mail it to our P.O. box there. But as you prepare your hearts to give and as our deacons get in place, if you need an envelope, please raise your hand. Our porters will serve you. Amen. I want to speak for a couple seconds here about why we do an offering each week. Why we do an offering each week. Three reasons that I want to give you. Uh, one reason is to honor God. Proverbs 3, 9 says, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thy increase. We honor God with our offering. A second reason why we do offering each week, to change hearts. Romans 10, 10 says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. We preach here the heart-changing word of God. A third reason why we do offering each week, to fuel the church. Malachi 3.10 says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse, 
that there may be meat in my house. Your tithes and offerings provides the substance so that the meat, God's spiritual food, may be delivered to power his people. Your tithes and offering fuel the church by allowing us to minister to the hearts of people. Amen? Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you for those who are given today, God. God, we ask that you take that giving, God, and that it's pressed down, shaken together, and that it's running over, God, and that new fruit abounds to their lives, God, because they have obeyed your word, God, and they didn't get distracted by the circumstances that go on, God, but they followed your word and believed in your word, God. So in the name of Jesus, God, we ask that every fruitful desire that glorifies you be fulfilled and manifested in their lives today, God, and let them receive with a good heart. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Let's give with excitement. always chasing after us always um, even when even when we don't want to be chased after he's still seeking us he's always seeking us um, he loved us so much that even though we were sinners he still gave his son and he died for us so that we can be drawn closer to father to God um, his love is forever. Um, and when I when I was thinking about this song that we're singing, um, it's really like a love song that God is singing to us. Um, he's trying to get us to be good children. And he wants us to know how much he loves us. Um, so um, we're going to do this. I just wanted y'all to know that because this morning it was it was eating my heart up and every time I think about it it makes me makes me want to weep but I got to be strong for the Lord so, and this is what God says he says I'll be committed to you 
I'll never leave you Nothing in this world can make me walk away No matter what life may bring I'll be by your side No matter what you face You won't be lonely Because forever is a long time That's how long I love you That's how long I love you Forever Forever is a long time That's how long I love you That's how long I love you Forever No matter what life may bring I'll be by your side No matter what you face won't be lonely and this is my promise to you my love I'm committed to you. I'm committed to you. Oh, 
and them 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 I can keep going I can keep going it's forever bless you some more. Give, give me some more. God bless you. All right. Little. Add some more to it. Add some more to it. Add some more to it. Add some. That's how long I love you. Forever. Amen. Anybody going to love him that long? Now you do know what forever is, don't you? It means the rest of your life. You know what ever means, right? It will never cease. I don't know about you, but I'm going to love him a long time, just like that, forever, the rest of my days. When I gave my life to Christ, I thought about it, and I knew for a fact that one thing I wanted to do is I wanted to live for him. I was able to make that age to know him at 10 years old, but at 19, I rededicated my life to the Lord, and, and for the last 42 years or 43 years of my life, I've been living this life for a Christ that I know that never passes me by. Amen. He sticks with me through whatever I've gone through. He sticks through me through thick and thin. Amen. He's just a God that's always there. That's how good he is. You know, and we bless it. Well, we're going, uh, we're going back church. Amen. We're going to make sure we do a hymn every Sunday. Uh, because these new folks don't know what church is. Amen. There's a song that says, Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. Anybody know it? All right, let's go on. Let's try to get this out. Ready? Pass me not, O oh gentle Savior. Here.
little bit. is our scripture reading today amen you that are watching us amen you may have to go to YouTube or watch the whatever the URL or whatever we have some technical difficulties today but we pray that you went to YouTube or Facebook and you found us amen uh, we didn't have anything but we got a hot spot they call it amen so I don't know how hot that is but it's a hot spot amen it sound like a club to me it's a hot spot. Oh, this is a hot spot. I got you. All right. Bless the Lord. All right. I'm, I was calling. I'm about to forgive me. Bring me back. Uh, I'm going to read this passage. I don't want you to be seated, but I need you to get context of it because we don't have our jumbotron, so this is the only scripture you'll get today. So let me read this. Amen. He answered and said, whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know that Whereas I was blind, now I see. You may be seated. Presence of a life-changing king. Just for context, I don't have to explain a lot of it, amen. I'm going to go back to the 17th verse and start, amen. So I'm, it, this story starts in the 17th verse, but I was going to just lift up and I don't have all my points, so I need to give you the context without me staying up an hour trying to explain it to you. It's really Jesus comforts his sister. Here it is. No, no, I'm sorry. Amen. 13, verse 13. The Pharisees are investigating the healing. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had been blind. Now the day in which Jesus had made the mud and opened the man's eyes was a Sabbath. 15 says, therefore, Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He put mud on my eyes, and the man replied, and I will wash, and now I see. 16 says, some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, asked, how can a sinner do such miraculous signs? So they went so, so they were divided. 17 says, finally, they turn again to the blind man. What have you to say about him? It was your eyes that was open. The man replied, he is a prophet. 18 says, and the Jews still did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they sent for the man's parents. 19 says, is this your son? They ask, is this the one you say that was born blind? How is it now that he can see? Verse 20 says, and when we, when we know he is our, we know he's our son. The parents answered, and we know he was born blind. 21 says, now, but now, but how he can see now? I ain't sure. Didn't survive. Or who opened his eyes so he could see? Ask him. He's of age. 
Let him speak for himself. Look here. I said, they're like, I ain't finna get in trouble. Y'all to help me. Come on. Somebody said it was religious. Now, I'm saying that these parents are like, hey, hey, hey. We glad he can see. But don't kill us because he can see. Because we didn't make him see. We didn't work on the Sabbath. We didn't iron no clothes Sunday morning. Okay. 23 says, there was uh, his parents. I mean, I, I skip one there. Therefore, his parents, he's of age, ask him. Now, then again, they called to the man and said, who was blind and said unto him, God, give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. And then we come to our key verse. He asked and said, whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know is that, whereas I was blind, I, I was blind. Now, I see. I want to talk about the, uh, mm, what's my subject? <laughs> From faith to assurance. From faith to assurance. We have technical difficulties, and so my message didn't come to the Jumatron, so it's on her iPad, and I don't know her code. <laughs> I, I re Thank you, Doc. I really know it, amen. I just can't remember it. And so we have this rule, amen, and I have a rule, amen. I don't have nothing to hide. And so, therefore, don't creep through my phone. You'll see something you ain't supposed to see, and you don't understand. Can I get a witness? And so, therefore, uh, she was out of town, something like that. And she said, where your phone? I said, oh, I changed my code. Because you went in my phone and blamed me for something. I really didn't. I was just making a point. Don't be creeping. In other folks' business when you understand. But thank you for letting me use your pad, though, baby. All right, bless the Lord. Siri said, which one? Zion. What? Okay, Lori said, don't see no contacts in your phone or something. <laughs> well, bless the Lord. She covered you right. Okay, bless the Lord. Father, we thank you for the word that we're going to share today. We pray now for the Holy Spirit to abide with us still, God, at this time. We uh, 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 curse the interference and the distractions that God at the root um, someone will still hear this word God and it will manifest in your own way to touch their lives that they were blind but they will may be able to see thank you for all those here that are here and those dear God that would abide by your word thank you for what you've done to me privately God that you'll openly publicly display that in Christ's name we pray amen it's really interesting because this afternoon amen or today or uh, last night in the midst of a, um, um, I was uh, putting a message together and it had several bullets and several uh, uh, um, uh, points for the jumbotron the whole nine yards. And then I woke up about five o'clock this morning and the Lord changed the message. And uh, I began to change the message and put it in, 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 in a Baptist format, sort of a theological format. And then when I got here, I found out that we didn't have no internet, so whatever I had prepared all day yesterday wouldn't have worked today. Ain't God good. So therefore, in the midst of we find yourself in making a change and making a shift, amen, because it's going to bless your life. I know it will. Amen. So what, look what the word of the Lord says. I got to keep touching it. That's like you. Keep touching it. Well, bless God. Aren't you, aren't you glad we, we got a good marriage? Lord. Thank you. 
I thank God Brother Wood helping me out, amen. He's filling my void. Say, thank you, Doc. <laughs> Let's get with it. <clears throat> the Bible says here in the, in the 25th verse, it says, whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know is that whereas I was blind, now I see. From faith to assurance. <clears throat> it's amazing, amen, that we have faith in everything, amen, between who's guilty and who's innocent. This text deals with the fact that who knows Christ and who does not know Christ. This text identifies with the idea of the fact that there are some, amen, that will believe and there were some will not believe. Number one, the story of the healing of the blind man is really an idea letting us know that it is most fascinating because this man, a man, was born blind. This man born blind is indicative of the fact of how you were born. You had sight, but you were blind. You had insight, but you were blind. You had emotions, but you were blind. Amen. And you were blind to the fact of what you didn't even know that you were blind about. Let me just try it this way. Have you ever known a man that you found out? Have you ever uh, thought about you found how ignorant you was? I'm the only one. All right. All right. All right. Have you found out how much you don't know? Have you ever got a piece of a conversation, a gossip, a man and storyline and your best friend told you the whole story? They taped the whole story. And because it came from your best friend, you know, it was authentic. And you got in a setting, a man, or got to a place where someone would speak to you and the story changed. And now you're in conflict with what you know and what you heard. Many of us, amen, find ourselves also in conflict with what we know and what we've heard. Come in the church, amen, talking about God's going to do that. Some of you, me and my son was talking the other day. How do you know that you didn't come back? This ain't your third time here. How you, how you know you wasn't a cat in another life and all this theory thinking and all of these things, amen? And, and, and when, you're, when you're blind, you're subject to those type of questions. When you're blind, amen, and that blurred blind is not physical blind, but our heart's blind, and we don't know the full revelation because we didn't put enough information in our spirit. We put it in our mind. Someone, amen, told you that you was a horoscope, amen, you're a cancer, you're a Libra, you're whatever, amen, and whatever that stuff is, amen, and now you operate like a crab. Oh, y'all ain't helping me. You act like a lion or whatever those are, amen, that you may be, Capricorn, whatever they are, amen. In my ignorant days, amen, I woke up every morning and read my horoscope because I was blind. I was so blind, I wanted to know exactly what to say to the girls today. Really wasn't concerned about the horoscope, amen, but they told me, they told you what, what the girls were expecting. So if they read the same thing that I read, and I said what they said, then I looked pretty deep. It helped to rap when you didn't have none. Ah, bless God. This story is about the healing of a blind man. He stands, but now I see. The difference, amen, with him and us, some of us are still secretively holding our salvation. We ain't told nobody that we really want to tell. Those that won't judge us, we let them know about Christ, but those that will condemn us, we say nothing. We don't go back to the hood and try to save the one that was on crack with us. We don't go back to the hood and save those that was on alcohol with us. We don't go back to the hood and save those that were drinking with, and whatever. Because we don't want other people to know that we can see now. Do you know why people don't want you to know that they can see? Because seeing takes responsibility. Seeing causes us to give me some more bass in this thing, amen. Seeing causes us to give an idea of what we can do, amen, to put ourselves in the right perspective. Seeing causes us the place that we change what we are and how we're going to do what we do. So therefore, therefore, the combat here is with the Pharisees. You know the Pharisees, right? They're in your family. The Pharisees are the one that will judge you. The Pharisees are the one that will talk about you. The one Pharisees are the ones that say, it don't take all that. Anybody got some Pharisees in the house? Some of y'all married to Pharisees and scribes. Can I get a witness? 
Amen. John 10, 25 of the same text, same chapter of the same book identifies this. He said, a glowing tribute to be effective in ministry is where? In Christ. If I'm going to grow, amen, I must grow in Christ and not my own life. So how do I move from faith to the assurance of faith? How do I move from the, my faith made me go to church. But many of your faith brought you to church, but you didn't leave with no assurance. You didn't come, you didn't come with blessed assurance. You came with blessed possibility. And I don't know about you, amen, I don't need possibilities. I need to know that I know that I know. The theme of the text is an argument about Christian experience. It identifies, the writer as well said, that the best, a writer once said this way, he said, the best argument of Christianity is a Christian. I feel God right there. The best argument for Christianity is a Christian. What we have, other people, amen, are trying to identify this God that we serve, and they're not Christians. And because they're not Christian, there's no convincing and there's no conviction about what they say and what they do. So we find ourselves here. The Bible tells us of assurance what we ought to say. John Matthew 5, 14 says, you are the light of the world. You have to have the assurance that you are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. You have to have assurance that you are the salt that adds flavor to this earth. John Isaiah 43 10 says, ye are my witnesses. You have to be willing to be subpoenaed by God. You have to be willing to be subpoenaed by God to be a witness that he is the Christ. Many of you, amen, are dodging court. You're dodging responsibility. You, you go around your family, you act like you're not saved so you fit in. The hell with folks if they don't fit in my life with Christ. This is about the restore, restoration, not of the man's eyes, but of a man's soul. Can I tell you that God has healed a lot of y'all, but your soul ain't got healed yet. You use God for your arthritis. You use God for your rheumatism. You use God for your headache. You use God for your cycle. You use God, but you have not got your soul restored. Because if your soul is restored, if your soul is right, it don't matter what the doctor says. Psalm 23, 3 says it this way. And the most effective proof of our argument is Christianity is that he restoreth my soul. Not my mind, my mind, no, 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 restored my soul. He ain't come back to get my mind. Your mind act you behind. But your soul, Matthew eleven forty five 45 says, go ye and show John Again, those things, which you do hear and see. The blind receive their clean, their sight. And, their, and, and the, the filthy are cleansed. The deaf hear. And the dead are raised up. And the poor have the gospel preached to them. You don't have to see it to believe it. You just have to know and hear that God done it. I don't have to go and see about what God is because God's everywhere I am. I don't have to run and try to find God in, in New York or someplace that someone has a designated spot because he restoreth my soul. The argument for this experience, my brothers and sisters, is that the central evidence of the text here is that God is still on the throne. The Bible says in Acts 14, 6, he says, And what shall we do to these men? For they indeed are notable men. Miracles have been done by them and manifested in all that we do in Jerusalem. We cannot deny it. They said the word had got to a point that we get to a point that we can't hear no more. We can't get where we need to be because what? We can't deny the power that has taken place in our life. We can't deny the fact that God woke us up in the morning. We can't deny that the sun still rose up. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So therefore, I know that where I was blind, now I see. I can't tell you when I stopped drinking. I can't tell you when I stopped needing to get high. I can't tell you when I stopped getting ready to go to the club. But all I can tell you is I was blind. But now I see. Yes, I got on. Our personal experience here is that we have an irresistible argument about the Christ that we serve. The argument is the fact that either you've been born again 
or you have not. And sometimes you just got to live a life, amen, and watch the life live with inside you. That which was seen and felt cannot be argued. You can't, you can't tell me that he's not real. I've been to too many hospital beds. I've buried too many people, amen. I've seen too many children be born. You can't tell me God ain't real. Mm. Let me see here. The makeover here is a conversion of a man that was born this way. Don't you know that we are all, amen, this man? Because you saw your mama, you saw your daddy, but you've been blind. Amen. You're so blind, you couldn't, as you grew up with them, you started not to believe what you see. Mm-hmm. The high point of opening of the text, here it is. The evidence of the gospel of Jesus Christ is deduced by personal experience. The evidence of Christ has nothing to do with my miracle. It has to do with your miracle. And some of you are trying to ride another man's miracle. You're trying to ride another man's testimony. You can't get in because your mama got in. You can't get in because your daddy got in. You got to know him for yourself. Can I get a witness? Ah, how do I move from faith to the assurance of faith? Otherwise, how do I move from faith to the guarantee of my faith? How do I move from the faith and then live out my faith? How do I live to get from the faith to the promotion of my faith? How do I get from the faith to the, pro, to the priority of my faith? How do I move to the faith to the elevation of my faith? Because some of y'all have faith, but it ain't elevated. You've gotten to become accustomed to being blind. You've learned how to rattle your cage. You learn how to be like Barnabas and rattle your cup. And God is asking this question like did blind Bartimaeus. What is that noise? Yes, uh, what is that noise? God, he wasn't talking about, they thought he was talking about the cup, but God wasn't talking about the cup. He talking about the noise around the cup. He's not talking about the noise at the church. He's talking about the noise around the church. He's not talking about the noise at the altar, but the noise around my faith. Yes, uh, God. Yes, sir. Uh, so we find here, Amen. One writer says and puts us in place to let us know that the argument is what God says. But here we go. The evidence, look what John, 1 John 1, 1 says. That which was born from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our own eyes, which we have looked upon in our own hands and have handled the word of life. How do you handle the word of life Sunday after Sunday and you be blind through the week? How do you see sometimes and sometimes you don't? Some of us can't see because we got to hide and go seek. Playing with God till the count get down to the last minute, then we want to run and get safe. Want a club until we on our way to hell, and then we want to get born again. Yeah, shit, yeah, God. 1 John 1, 3 says this, That which we have seen and heard, and declare we unto you, that you also have fellowship with us, and truly fellowship in with the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ. He puts us in a place that we have what? Fellowship with the Father and the Son, Jesus Christ. You didn't come here just to know God, but you can't get to God without going through his Son. My, 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 my. Hey, hey, God, I love it. Like, you know, look here, look, 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 look. Um, my son, Joshua, all right, uh, uh, is, and all the rest of my kids, amen, uh, Josh and Ez, amen, they are the grandfather or the God grandchildren of David Sr. But they couldn't get there unless they went through the sun. Okay, okay. And some of y'all are trying to bypass the sun to get the God fairy inheritance from God. Trying to do it without living for God, without praising God, without worshiping God. You can't get to the Father unless you go through the... Uh, you got to go through the sun. Can I get a witness? So therefore, this experience that we go through, hey man, this kid and this, this, this young man, hey man, is able to see now because God put mud on his eyes. And once again, we talked about that. God went to what he was born with. Hey man, put some spittle and put it on his eyes and the man became to see. Hey man, and, 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 and we find here what God's really saying is that I want to do something in life, but I got to do something different from you. 
the high point of the opening of this text is this, is that the gospel of Jesus Christ, as I say, is put to a place that we can figure out him and not us. They were trying to figure out him, but not him. They were trying to get the lad, but not the God of the lad. And some of you, amen, watch this, amen, people will come to you because of you're a Christian. They'll come to you because you've been born again, because you're supposed to give to them. They want the evidence and the witness of your life and the prosperity of your life, but they don't want the God of your life. And we're sitting around here born again and trying to act with, uh, hang around and, and think we ought to love sinners and do more for sinners. If your child is not born again, he's a sinner. If your mama's not born again, she's a sinner. If your daddy ain't born again, he's a sinner. They're on earth, but they're blind. Now the question is, what is it going to take for them to see? It's going to take you for them to see. Yeah, God, we bless you right there, Lord. Watch this. He says, watch this. One thing I know is I was blind, but now I see. John 5, 11, the text says this. He had made me whole the same that said unto me, take up thy bed and walk. Jesus is in the miracle of transmission and miss, And look at, he's looking for the underdog. Yippee, yeah, yeah, y'all ain't got me. He's looking for the underdog. He's looking for the one that no one, everyone counted out. The discourse was not about the Pharisees knowing another scripture. The discourse was not about the Sadducee being an intercessor. It's always been for the one that were born without Christ. Born blind or born with the illness, amen, has nothing to do with heaven. It's the revelation of you know that God is your source and that he can change your life around. My, 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 my. I think everybody that had influence became a witness to this blind man's sight because they knew him. Y'all know him. Let me say, let me try it this way. Uh, not long ago, 10 years ago or so, hey, man, I went to my high school reunion. I think it was a 20th year reunion, somewhere like that. So, or 30, whatever it was. And um, they put me on program. And the program says, Dr. David Denson Jr., pastor, founder of Bernie Bishop Baptist Church. And uh, people was trying to find who that was. <laughs> I'm cutting up as I normally do because, you know, I pollinate pretty good. I'm, I'm a conversationist, whatever the case may be. And so uh, um, we're sitting here and they really pay because, you know, they got alcohol. Okay, they drinking. They just come to try to live out their high school reunion all over again. So therefore, when they came up, they announced that and they said, David, they like, David, this one. I got ready to get up to tell my, that's you? What they were trying to ask me, how did you start to see? Who made, who opened up your eyes and who made you important? Who told you to build something? Got up and did the prayer I did, what I had to do, whole nine, spoke my peace and gave him a little Christ, whole nine yards, and went on about my life. They got back to my dog, man, Dave, you done a lot. He said, then you don't even look old. They kept saying, what you drinking? What do you do? Nothing. Just Jesus. Ah, uh, my, my, my. All I can say is I was blind. Now, see, how often do your testimony identify with where you at? How often does your testimony identify with where you at or where you are? Because many of us have a testimony, but no one knows that we used to be blind. Because we act like we're still blind to fit in. Watch this, a blind man trying to fit in. A blind man trying to fit in. How does he know what to put on? A blind man trying to fit in. How do you know what style it is? Does he have baggy pants on or skinny jeans? Does he have pants that are, uh, uh, are starched in the front or does he have whole patches like y'all wearing regular clothes now and paying more for it? How 
does a blind man fit in? And some of you, amen, have been able to see God and know God, and you're still trying to fit in where you used to be. Yes, God, we love you right there. The best of all, we understand this, that the power in our lives came from Christ. Yeah. Here is truly a real challenge to the claim of our preaching. Number one, here it is. Will the message we preach effectively transform the life of those that accept it? See, has anybody... Oh, watch this. Watch this. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Yeah. This is a Bible. Would you agree? You, you're hoping, right? Regardless of how I present this, it does not work if it's on a platter of poo-poo. I got other words, but we're on TV. Regardless of how much you see in here, sometimes the container is contaminated. Many of us are operating out of contaminated containers. What we have is good, and what we see is good, but most people can't receive because they usually don't deal with bull. One thing about people in the world, they know BS when they know it. We tolerate it, act like it ain't real. We're like, oh, I smell something. No, you see something. Watch this. Secondly, will it create a living hope in the hearer? Will it create what? A, uh, does it want to make someone else want to get saved? Does it want to make someone else stop the life that they lived? Or are you still trying to live with the crap that you've been putting up with? Will it take a person uh, more, make a person more know Christ? Do the life that I live and the sight that I share and I talk about, does it make me live? How does it move me from my faith to the assurance of my faith? Watch this. Let us ponder on the truth for a minute, amen, and ask ourselves this, this subject, as it applies to our matter. Not only have I gained assurance by faith in Christ, but I also have purchased insurance. Uh, not only have I got assurance, but because of the stuff I see in this life. What do you see, Bishop? I see people dying and going to hell. What do you see, Bishop? I see marriages falling apart because they can't communicate. What do you see, Bishop? I see people that say they love the Lord, but they ain't got time for church. I wonder, is there anybody here can move from faith to the assurance of faith. The song says, Blessed Assurance. Mm, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste. I say it's a foretaste. It's not here right now. It's down the road. It's a foretaste. It's not happening right now. It's a foretaste of glory divine. Maybe you didn't get it. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. I feel like preaching this morning. Is anybody here knowing my Jesus? Is anybody here knows my Lord? Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. I move from faith to assurance, but assurance ain't good enough. That means it's something that I'm sure in. But the insurance that I have is in my policy. Line 316. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Is anybody here got the same assurance? My pad quit on me now, but that's all right. 
Look what the word of the Lord says. I found a way to make my assurance become my insurance. He said, this is, what do you get? He said, well, Lord, the man came and said, did you let, how did you see? He said, I don't know who he is. All I can tell you is that I was blind, but now I see. He went from faith to assurance. Then he went to insurance because what he had was term insurance. Some of y'all are shouting, but you got term insurance. He had term when he couldn't see. He had term when he couldn't shout. He had term when he couldn't dance. He had term when he couldn't walk. But God gave him blessed assurance. Assurance that saves me. Assurance that raised me. Assurance that made me. Anybody got assurance? I need about five more people that got some assurance. And we'll get on up out of here. He came like a virgin through a virgin birth. He came like a lad like Lee me. He came and died on Calvary's cross. But before he died, they beat him. They whipped him. But it didn't stop the insurance poverty. He got to the point, uh, hung on Calvary's cross. He didn't think that he had the assurance. But God said with a loud voice, this is my beloved son and, and whom I am well pleased. That's the insurance. I'm, I'm guaranteed everlasting life. I'm guaranteed peace and joy. I'm guaranteed that God walks with me and talks with me and tells me that I am his own. I don't know who he is. All I can tell you is I was blind, but now I see. I move from faith to assurance. John 3, 16, and Jesus dying gives me insurance, and it kills my term policy. My term of, uh, of acting a fool is gone. My term of drinking is gone. My term of backslide is gone. That's term. Has anybody had a high and then lost your high? Just three of y'all. Just three of y'all. A young man raised his hand. What you say? You know why? Because without Christ, it's a short term. I'm closing. What you need to do is, after you get faith, after you get assurance, after you get insurance, and you get rid of your term, give me whole life. Tell somebody I want whole life. I, I want whole life. I look at my hands and my hand look no look. I need whole life. I need whole life. I need to praise my whole life. I need the joy my whole life. I need to dance my whole life. I need to run my shout whole life. Shout whole life. I praise him, my, I shout, my, I dance, my, I testify, my, hey, hey, whole life. He saved my whole life. He saved my next life, and he got my new life. I've had it my whole life. Faith to assurance of faith. Faith to the insurance of his death of our faith. Bypass the term of my conditions. Saved me right where I am. And gave me whole life. We ain't out of message. We just out of time. Shout whole life, whole life. This kid says, I don't know about all that other stuff. I don't, I don't, I don't, know, about that. I don't know about no Sunday Sabbath. I know, I know, I know I ain't supposed to do no work on the Sabbath and we ain't supposed to iron clothes and we get a whooping on if we do that. But can I tell you, I had him the term of my life. But 42 years ago, he became my whole life. I love Lloyd strongly and I appreciate it, but he's my whole life. Thank God for my children. They love me and they look like me. And I'm glad about it. Except them yellow grandchildren. They just got the forehead and missed, the, they missed chocolate. 
But that ain't my whole life. You better quit depending on everybody else to make you see. Quit depending on the husband to make you see, your children to make you see, your job to make you see. And just let the mud come on your eyes. Obey what God says. And I vowed 42 years ago that I would say that I would serve him my whole life. And can I tell you, whole life can't just be on Sunday. Whole life can't just when you're on prayer line. The next time you're talking about somebody and about their blindness, do you have whole life? Because some of you all think that you have a whole life policy, but what you bought was term. And you don't want to get to the end and find out your, your, your policy is void. Come to terms with the fact that if you're not born again, you're on your way to hell. Come to terms with the fact that the only way you get in is that you know him for yourself. And here are the terms to get the whole life policy. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth shall not perish but shall have everlasting life. That's how you get a whole life. Don't take a piece of Christ. Take all of Christ. Don't take his salvation but take his lifestyle. Make it be part of your whole life. And some of you are looking at people that preach and sing and dance and whatever the case may be. And you think the fact they're going to be in it, but that was just a term. It'd be a shame to preach this gospel, Hinton, for the term of your life and then still miss whole life. You know why? Because some of our conditions are not sincere. Our policy has lapsed. Our policy has lapsed. Otherwise, you ain't made no payments. Don't get mad at God if you ain't putting nothing in. Your prosperity has lapsed. Your joy may have lapsed. And guess what? He's a redeemer. Another agent can come by and write you another policy. Every time someone tell you about Jesus, they're giving you a better policy. And sometimes I don't need a policy, I just need to read the fine print. When they give you a policy, now you know what they do, they check? Your blood. When we bring stuff to the altar of God, it is a, it is a, it is a burnt offering. We come and, and that's outside the, the, the outer court, inner court, and then the man of God takes it back to the inner court. While he's in there, amen, something's taking place. He's sprinkling blood over your stuff. When you come to this church and you ask me for prayer, it's not just praying for you online. I want you, it's your whole life. You bring the terms to me, and when you bring the terms to me, I go back and give it to God, and he converts your term. Somebody shout, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. You can't serve him on your terms. You can't give him a piece of you. It's all of you. Or nothing at all. And these are the terms. If you don't know Christ as your Savior, amen, on the screen there's a chance for you to give your life to Christ. Elders are standing in front of our church, amen, because maybe you came to terms today, the fact that you've not surrendered like you should. And now you want to get your life policy in order. You want to get where you need to be in Christ. They're here not just to look at you, but they're praying fervently that you would take God and let Jesus be in your whole life. Don't know what it is, man, woman, boy, girl. Could be a small thing, could be a big thing, but whatever it is, let's give it to God and watch God do it. Let's come to terms with what we are and what we need and watch God do miracles. We're praying. They're coming. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Is there another?
Come on, let's get the whole life right. Let's get our whole life right. Let's get our whole life. Let's, let's, get it, let's get it together. Somebody else. You may not want to just pray. You want to join the church like them and come in to join, be part of the family. Will you come? Man, woman, you on, on the screen right now. Amen. Call the number. Give your life to Christ right now. Watch God do it for you. Is there one? Is there another? Pastor, I'm already born again. Amen. I just want to pray about where I am. To come, come to terms with it right now. Come to terms with it. Come and ask God for forgiveness. Ask God for mercy. He'll do it. I don't know how we can come and we can come, amen. And all of us sitting here and we ain't got nothing to ask God. Oh my God. Come on now. I feel that God is asking you. There's another coming. There's another coming. Somebody else. Somebody else. Come on. Move. Move. We celebrate God for the revelation. We celebrate God for the information. Somebody else. Come on. They're coming in the sanctuary. You ought to do it online right now. You ought to do it right now. In the name of Jesus, we bless you, God. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Come on, that's six of them. Come on, come on, give God, come on, whole life, come on. Come on, don't miss it, don't miss it, don't miss it, don't miss it, don't miss it. Don't miss it, don't miss it, don't miss it. Everything. Glory, glory, glory. Nothing. Withhold. God, my whole life, I'm not going to withhold anything. Yes, Lord. My, 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 my God. I surrender all to you, Lord. We surrender right now, God. Father, we bless you for what we've heard, what you've exposed to, God. Thank you for those that came to know Christ, their God, that they came and came to terms with their own decision to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So, God, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. And, God, we give you all the praise. And thank you, God, that we all can say, I was blind, but now I see. If you can see, give God praise right where you are. Give God praise right where you are. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. To God be. You may be seated, President Life Changing King. Amen. Let me give you some announcements. Amen. While they're still ministering, do what they need to do. We are getting ready to have a, uh, uh, a resurrection weekend. On Friday, we have uh, the last seven sayings of the cross will be uh, ministered and preached by our sons and daughters in the faith. Amen. On Saturday, we have an affair taken all day long. Uh, what do you call it, Lori? Family Day. Amen. Uh, there'll be gifts, prizes, all kinds of stuff on Saturday. So we're going to have a resurrection weekend. It is our entry of coming back to church, having a great time, and celebrating God. Amen. So we want you to uh, uh, adhere to that. Put that on your schedule. Amen. Our fast this week, amen, is we're fasting this week uh, all, all from Monday through Saturday. What is it? Monday through Saturday, right? Six days. We do six days. Seven days. We take the Sabbath off. And how do we do that? Because, man, we got work to do. Now, you that have not been able to get online right now, once again, you ought to check the office. Amen. Uh, did I bring my little cup in here? Babe? Get my communion cup, baby. <laughs> On next Sunday, normally we would have a, our, uh, we're building our ministry for communion, but we have communion. And they got these new communion cups right now, y'all. They look like a wine glass. On one side, a man has bread, and you flip it over. It's a glass. Now you're going to be fighting trying to peel that little wafer out of there y'all be trying to do. Especially us with little gloves on and carrying on. Amen. It's uh, uh, So what I'm saying that to you that online, but you might, this week, amen, we'll be having communion. If you're not having communion and you don't have the cup and the bread and the wine, stop by the office this week, all right? And uh, uh, stop by the office this week and pick up your communion cups if you want to have communion at home. We'll have communion here. But we want you to be able to know that we've made provisions for you that are not coming back to church yet. Because I know it's very hard to sanctify what you're doing at the house when you don't have the elements. And so if you don't have it at the home and you want to have communion at your house with your family, amen, stop by the office this week, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, amen, and you can pick up the cups that you need, amen, for your saved family.
Don't be going to find a whole bunch of blind people. All right? So I think that uh, you can have communion with us right here, and we can break bread together. So that's available for you this week. We have those for you. Anything else? Well, bless the Lord. I, da, 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 da. Amen. On this Sunday, uh, uh, do pray. We're at 5 o'clock, we'll be at um, in St. Matthew in preaching for Pastor Allison's third church anniversary. Amen. So some of us will be traveling there, amen, to take care of that, amen, and we'll still have things that we're doing right here. I hope you have been, you've been blessed by the word today. We, we apologize for the hot spot and all the stuff that wasn't working, so I couldn't give you all my stuff, amen. But nevertheless, God is still able, amen. Thank you, man, amen. Thank y'all working with a brother. All right, amen. If nothing else, let's stand. Yeah, you at the house too, yeah. Get up. Put that chicken down. Put it. Put it. Now. All right. Look this way. Let me bless you. Now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance and never shine upon your life. May the Lord bless you when you rise up early and when you settle late at night. May God bless you in your labor and your leisure, your fears, and yes, even your tears until that day that we all sat at the feet of Jesus and there be no sunrise, no sunset. May the Lord God bless you, burning bush and friends, and may the Lord bless you and bless you real good with whole life. <laughs>